Welcome to AI with Sohini, where we talk about anything and everything in the field of artificial intelligence. In this fourth and final installment of the short course on generative AI, I wanted to take you through some of the latest products that have been launched and that are currently available for users in order to use in their, in their daily life. They say 2023 was the year of generative AI to be used and 2024 is going to be the year of adoption. So let us all figure out what are the different ways in which we can make our daily life a little bit easier, a little bit better using generative AI products. I wanted to mention that this short course is typically aimed for very beginners into the field of AI and generative AI. So if you're interested or if you're intrigued about what is the promise of generative AI, then this short course is the beginner level for you. However, I know I have been receiving a lot of comments and a lot of feedback asking for a little more advanced course on generative AI. So that is what's going to follow this particular installment. There is going to be a, and a little more advanced level of, of a short course where we talk about the models themselves, how the neural network architectures have evolved over time, and what is the impact of fine tuning or what is the impact of, of modifying the architecture overall as we are moving from a large language model to a large multimodal model, which not just works with language, but it can do image generation, video generation, tabular data, all different kinds of data coming together using a particular transformer uh, backend in this case. If this content is of interest to you, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Now, let's get started. As a last entity in this generative AI short course, I wanted to talk about the types of generative AI models. What are the similarities and what are the dissimilarities? Now, the first category that we've talked a lot about with examples are large language models that are primarily used for language generation versus there is this other class of models which is specifically used for image and video generation. So if you are talking about things like GPT-3, Llama, then all of that falls under large language models or LLM versus large multimodal models. The examples could be Gemini or Emu or anything such as Runway, where you can generate uh, images and even uh, videos from text. Now, let's try to understand what are the similarities and dissimilarities here. The first thing we need to understand is how does typically a large language model work? Now, GPT-3, the, the backbone, is actually called Transformer. And here, the process that is that is happening is sentence completion. So that means if you have an input in which you have you are asking a robot must, and, and you're trying to guess what's the next thing, the correct answer is obey. But let's say this GPT-3, which is pre-trained, it starts predicting exterminate. The answer, it will say that no, it's supposed to be obey. So this information goes back and this model gets fine-tuned. So this is the process of fine-tuning that has to happen for the model to figure out what is the right next word and following which it, it starts predicting what's the next sentence and paragraph and so on and so forth. So once a model like this is well-trained, this is the final outcome where if the input prompt is recite the first law of robotics, the GPT-3 starts putting out one token at a time, which is called a robot may, may not injure a human being, dot, dot, dot. So as you can see, the most important factor here is you have to take a, a group of words, which is the lang language that, that you enter, and break it down into these smaller chunks, which are called tokens. And these tokens, they form the main input to a transformer-based model where the output is simple sentence completion. So it takes the input prompt and it tries to complete this sentence. And that is the reason why the output comes out in the format as required. So there is a training process that has already happened using distributed architecture because these are huge models, which, you know, 175 billion or trillions of parameters. So that's the reason why training these models are ex extremely tenuous. However, the outcome is whenever you pass a sentence or an input prompt, it breaks it down into smaller tokens. And then 
all the system is trying to do is predict the next token. Now, let's take a look at the alternative or the large multimodal models which are used for image and video generation. A very good example is the example DALI 3 that I've already shown you in the previous video that I'm going to also be linking in this video. In this model, the same principle applies. An image, in this case, it is 256 by 256 red, green, blue plane image. It is also converted into tokens. So as you can see, the backbone of all these GPT or these transformer models is that the input needs to be fed in the form of tokens. Language gets converted to tokens, images gets converted into tokens. So that is what happens is that the images, they get converted into tokens. And ideally, there are latent image text that is also fed. So when these models are getting trained, it is not just the image, but they are latent explanations of these images that have also been set together. So that's the reason why it is multimodal in nature. It is able to process not just image tokens, but image and text tokens together, followed by which it looks up vectors in order to predict what is the next entity that, is, that that should happen in these cases. And again, there are complex processes um, of image generation that we also have to take into account. But the major thing that I wanted to show you is that in any model, even in DALI 3, the backbone is, is about 12 million parameters from the transformer or the GPT model. The only major difference is how the image itself gets encoded into tokens. So in a universe where large multimodal models exist, the major goal that needs to happen is to break the images into tokens, the text to tokens, and videos into tokens. Once you've done that and trained the model enough, you're ready. Now let's look at some of the existing products that are super powerful using the GPT-3 or GPT-4, the architecture essentially using transformers, and it can be large multimodal or large language models. The first example I wanted to show you again, it's going to be the, in the description box below, is called Gen2 by this company called Runway. And this actually is extremely powerful in order to generate video out of just simple text. So if you want to do style transfer, if you want to generate very simple videos using very small and, and succinct prompts, then this is where you can actually try. The next product is LinkedIn. And this is actually the premium version of LinkedIn. So if you have premium version of LinkedIn, you will have access to this feature called Write with AI. If you click on the Write with AI, it has the capability of changing your, uh, your caption as well as your details automatically and change it into different formats. If you don't like in a particular format, you can keep asking it to you know, give you different, different versions and it's, it's going to give you the exact text that you want. And let's say that you, you want to keep whatever you have. And then if it's the about section, it takes the text that you have and it can actually build several other versions. Never forget to give a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down so that the system knows how to improve itself. So for this exercise, I want to show you how Colab has this capability of generating code on its own. So I wanted to de demonstrate with a language data set. So this is called the short jokes data set, and it has a lot of language data that I want to show how you can automatically process using very simple prompts. So Whenever you open Colab, in this case, I have uploaded this train.csv. This was the, the file that, that contains all of the language data set. So you can either start coding or you can generate with AI. So if I want to generate with AI, I do something like this where I say <clears throat> read train.csv into a new uh, data frame called train df. And that's it. And here you see, I have this, uh, you know, command that automatically gets generated. So I didn't have to write the code. The system actually did the work of generating the code on its own. And now if I do this, it actually ends up running. Uh, now let's take a look at, uh, you know, what this, uh, what, what this looks like. So this is the data frame. And as you can see, it has a lot of text into it. But now let's say that I don't, I don't know what is the right, you know, libraries to use. So in this case, I actually said import spacey with English vocabulary. So very simple English language is what I'm typing. 
And whenever I run this code, it generates all of the libraries that need to be run. And that is all I do. I just regenerate everything. So I literally write that. So join all of the text in the column TF text. Um, join all of that. So it will automatically generate the command join. So here you see the input was the prompt and the output was all of the data itself. And now what I will do is I will run my NLP uh, algorithm on it. And what this ends up doing is all of the text that was joined into a single paragraph, it takes every single word and it tries to find what kind of word is that? Is that a punctuation? It, if it's a preposition, uh, if it's just a punctuation, um, if it's just a root, you know, root is from where there will be other entities following up as well. So it's going to tag every part of the entity. And now that, you, that this is done, you can visualize the, all of this as a graph. And there is also this Colab AI that I wanted to tell you, know, tell you about that if you want a companion, if you don't really know what to do, what is the command to uh, generate? So if you, if you ask something like this, it's going to give you examples and then you can use this code with caution as well. So this is the way in which you can very deeply ingrain AI with coding so that if you know what to do, you can just type that as a very simple prompt. The code will get generated. Or if it's something more complex, which, which is like in writing functions, you can again ask that here and you will start seeing examples. So coding becomes much more easier now. The other example that I wanted to show you was how to use the, the Copilot with Microsoft Edge. So in this case, I have my resume that I am opening with Microsoft Edge. And this is my, my resume. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Copilot. Now, Copilot will have, again, three different modes that if I want it to be creative, if I wanted a balance setting, or if I want it to be very numerically accurate. So here in this case, I can start asking questions about this document. And whenever you, you pass something like this, because this is a very secret document, and I'm trying to make sure that this does not get used in order to uh, retrain, uh, you know, the co-pilot, what this person is, is telling me that, you know, we are not going to be reusing this for any other work. But here you see that if I asked a question, uh, you know, does this experience, the, the, does this person have experience starts, you know, literally summarizing all of my experiences. That's it. So you see that it not just gave all of my experiences and summarized it. The, the great experience here is it also links each and every part. So then as you see the first one, so there is this global director and it gives you exactly where this location is. So this is when we took the whole information and we chunked it into into data chunks this literally can tell you where in this location uh, you know is this is this particular coming from so this increases the readability as well as the relevance of large documents so let's say that you have like an 86 page document and you really want to know how many people are collaborating on it or what are some of the names of the of the universities or what are some of the names of the technologies that that have been used in it you can literally you know click on these on these links and they'll tell you exactly where to go and then you can also i really like this functionality where you say ask from the web instead so you can ask something very pointed as that <clears throat> and this copilot starts giving very detailed um, you know experiences and it tells so this was fourth brain and Volvo cars to develop the starter startup experience. And now if you if you want to say that, tell me more about Volvo cars. So now at this point, this actually goes to the web. So it's not answering from the document anyway, but it's actually going to the web and, and asking you know, questions. You can have this combined experience of not just you know, querying a particular document, but you can also query the document along with the web. So these are some of the very powerful tools, and I hope you find them very useful and stay tuned for the enterprise level and the specialized courses in the near future.